And it is my pleasant duty to give the floor uh, to Yulia Osacha Ferreira uh, to uh, give her talk uh, titled Eastern Civilization and Western Enlightenment in Ariganagao's Bungakurom. And I would like to, uh, to mention also uh, here uh, that the session would be recorded if, if no one has any uh, objection to that. Francesca, are you, are you fine uh, with that also? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then we start the sharing. should uh, focus the, the, camera is, yeah, the camera is yeah pro probably <laughs> the audience <laughs> so uh, hello everybody Francesca hello um, uh, nice to see you at least uh, like this uh, first of all uh, my name is uh, Julia Sacha Ferreira this is not uh, my first time here at this conference uh, but uh, once again I want to thank uh, to organizers of the conference, uh, uh, and it's my greatest pleasure uh, to be here and to give you a paper. Uh, I had, I, I must confess, also uh, I had to change uh, uh, to specify the title of my uh, paper. This is synthesis of the Sino-Japanese civilization and the Western Enlightenment uh, in uh, on greetings. It's how I translate uh, Bunga Kurun by Ariga Nagao. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce once again, uh, very briefly, uh, Ariga Nagao, uh, who was, in fact, the, the highest-ranked politician in Japan and even China. Uh, he was a secretary of the National Assembly, uh, secretary of Senate uh, at the uh, Privy Council of Japan. He was a secretary of Prime Minister of uh, uh, Minister Ito Hirobuni. He was a patent director, the Minister of Agriculture and Commons, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, uh, from 1909 till 13, he was Eurist Consultant of Yuan Shikai, the President of the Republic of China. Besides all these, he is considered the father of social studies in Japan. He was uh, really, uh, let's say, outstanding or very significant. Uh, in the history of um, jurisprudence uh, of Japan, lawyer and educator. Three times he represented uh, Japan at the Hague Peace Conference and uh, uh, the most significant probably in his biography, he was the first Japanese nominated for the Nobel Prize for Peace. The last but not the least and very significant uh, for today, he was a really devoted neo-Confucianist. So, moving to Ariga's text, Bunga uh, Kuron. <clears throat> we know, oh, I will skip it. Uh, uh, we know that on Ritens is the first volume of the work, uh, Bungaku series, part one on Bungaku, uh, Bungaku uh, Social. And the second volume was Bunga, uh, also Bungaku series uh, on philosophy or disciples on Confucius. Uh, I suggest initially it was planned uh, as the uh, introductory part of a series of, of writings devoted to Bungaku in uh, Ariga's uh, understanding, but eventually became an independent text. Uh, according to Horn Mahisao, uh, uh, in this text, Ariga stated his uh, objections to European uh, ideo ideological or um, uh, social thoughts at that time. He contrasted the Chinese philosophy and European thought uh, and asserted priority and values of the former. Uh, he attempted to, to reconcile European science, which he called the Rigaku, uh, with Chinese thought uh, on the principles of the later and scrutinized Bungaku from the perspective on Confucianism and linked it with uh, Tetsugaku. Uh, as uh, Sekiruchi uh, says, uh, in the end of this uh, work, Ariga proposed the ideal model of culture 
uh, which is grounded of four dominants, beauty, greatness, uh, sincerity, and benefit. <clears throat> Oops. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Mm. Okay. Uh, Ariga st uh, starts uh, uh, his work with a remarkable declaration. Sorry, it looks like it's a technical issue. Uh, they're important uh, for understanding these three ties. Japanese culture originates from China. I believe this is the wrong presentation. If oh. we can restart, then you will have more <laughs> facts. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Um, uh, let's just just open. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. No. So. Uh, the main idea is uh, uh, in Bunga Kuron. Uh, Japanese culture originates from China. And uh, what is uh, remarkable, uh, this is his uh, really uh, principal standpoint. And uh, uh, what I can say that in any not specified mentions of China about intellectual tradition, social culture, state government, etc., any mention of China applies to uh, Japan and vice versa. So in his work, Ariga systematically uses phrases uh, Wakano Bunmei. Uh, you will see, ah, Wakano Bunmei, yeah. Yeah, this. Um, <clears throat> uh, I will follow Ariga's idea that Japanese uh, culture originates from China and uh, will call it Sino-Japanese uh, Sino civilization. At the same time, Ariga never says about Japan uh, the way we are used to, like Nihon, but rather Honpo, Kuni, Wagakuni, etc. So he never calls Japan Japan. Uh, but he calls uh, uh, China, he calls European countries, England, France, Russia, the USA, or just as uh, Seiyo, Europe. Although the text is uh, really sophisticated, I will try to outline the key points uh, of interaction of the West and the East in Japan, Ariga's interpretation, but uh, I will touch only several, uh, or, uh, actually one uh, sphere. Uh, after criticizing uh, Japanese for their devotion to the current tendency uh, that is European enlightenment uh, at the expense uh, of Asian civilization, how he calls uh, this Wakando uh, Bunnei, uh, and the teaching on Confucius, of course, uh, Said Mono Kyogaku. Uh, uh, Ariga starts talking about uh, pros and cons of enlightenment. Of course, uh, he could not deny that it was very uh, profitable for Japan and it can be used in many different spheres of uh, social life, uh, like uh, uh, in social life, uh, um, in the sphere of um, uh, state government, uh, uh, laws and regulations, as he says but also uh, in agriculture, industry, uh, communications, uh, and so on. So really in different spheres of life. Uh, at the same time, he expresses uh, the displeasure mainly for the reason that uh, the Enlightenment in Japan became down to the learning sciences, he called uh, Rigaku, only. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the collation of achievements of the West and the East resulted in designation two essential methods uh, or approaches uh, to perceive and to interact with, as Ariga says, various phenomena and objects. He is using this uh, really ancient Chinese um, uh, concept. Uh, hence, Ariga considered analysis. Yeah. 
here, it's better. Uh, 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 Arrigo consider analysis uh, as a method to examine material world. Of course, it is applied, to, uh, it is related to European sciences and uh, technological progress. And as a feature of uh, the Eastern or Sino Japanese civilization, uh, uh, he calls um, synthesis as a method to concise the essence of various phenomena and things. And uh, mainly uh, public order or laws and regulations are based on it. Uh, so uh, trying to, I, I will try to clarify uh, what he means saying this. So first of all, uh, analysis. Yeah, it's uh, the easiest. <laughs> um, uh, there is this very interesting a citation from the uh, text. First of all, uh, modern European scientists admit that the essence of the science is to compose, uh, decompose. Englishmen call exceptional uh, science outstanding analyst or great analyst. Uh, I would like to direct your attention that uh, the usage of um, two words for the same uh, meaning, yeah, uh, analysis. So then Ariga talks about uh, analysis, uh, which is uh, the feature of uh, uh, the, uh, the science. He used bunkai, uh, that is uh, to disassemble, to integrate, to decompose. Uh, at the same time, he doesn't neglect uh, bunseki, which we are used to use for analysis now. Uh, uh, the objects uh, to decompose in social sciences, morals uh, can be uh, for uh, moral sciences, he says, and this is um, in quotation marks. It's uh, uh, really uh, um, citations, uh, political organization or structure, and uh, legal system. But also analysis can be applied, uh, of course, to uh, applied uh, sciences or disciplines uh, that is chemistry which analyzes uh, substances, uh, physics that deals with objects, um, material physical objects, uh, mechanics, uh, analysis force and deals with plants and living organisms and so on. And what is very interesting for me, it was, uh, it also related to natural selection uh, in wildlife and human society. Um, it can be applied to political economy and to psychology. And uh, uh, you can see what elements uh, of um, this analysis uh, Ariga uh, calls. Um, contrary to uh, uh, analysis, synthesis does not, uh, this is a citation, uh, does not uh, decompose already existing uh, whatever, here in the citation it's uh, determined human nature. This is the way to create in the tab to uh, aggregate uh, the appropriate and suitable. Um, Ariga states that synthesis is a great harmony. And uh, in this uh, interpretation it can be applied to any sphere of uh, human activity. Uh, it can be social sciences, it can be social life, it can be fine arts, uh, it can be uh, uh, whatever. And synthesis results in beauty. Uh, actually, uh, in his work, Ariga uses uh, great harmony and beauty almost as synonymous. And of course, results in fine arts uh, like uh, material uh, implementation of this uh, concept. Uh, talking about differences, uh, I'm summarizing <laughs> already, step by step. Talking about differences between uh, East and West, uh, we can say that West, this is analysis that can be uh, applied. To, uh, uh, or uh, somehow uh, implemented in sciences. Uh, sciences uh, produce or result in technologies and technologies move progress. And this is exactly what is enlightenment, at least at this work uh, for Ariga. Uh, if we are talking about Sino-Japanese civilization, it, this is of course synthesis. 
Uh, it is based on the principle of heaven and humanity. Uh, in Briggs, you can see um, uh, concepts he is using. It is also implemented in uh, orders and uh, order or uh, laws and regulations. It is based on great harmony and beauty and related to knowledge and uh, the great teaching. Uh, actually, every time he talks about social social structure, social uh, hierarchy, so the state government uh, um, uh, relations uh, between people, uh, he is using this knowledge and uh, great teaching and uh, also analyzes um, uh, this whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, following these stages of uh, uh, great teaching. Uh, as a conclusion, yeah, conclusion, uh, what uh, Ariga brings, uh, uh, Ariga states uh, in his treatise, uh, the East and West, uh, the West are not incompatible with each other like fire and ice. No other. The spiritual tradition of the Sino Japanese civilization and the te technological uh, progress of the West should be uh, harmoniously combined for the uh, unrivaled before upcoming prosperity of Japan. It's how uh, Ariga saw uh, Japan in the future through the aggregation of harmony of the Eastern text, harmony or beauty, energy uh, of the European sciences. And it can be used or can be prof profitable in the sphere of state government or social well-being, uh, what is, first of all, for Ariga, public order, uh, sciences and industrial technologies, and, of course, uh, fine arts. For fine arts, he devoted really, uh, he pays a lot of attention. And uh, uh, I don't know how it is, what time? Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. Uh, then I would like uh, to show you uh, my conclusion, <laughs> not Ariga's, and introduce you uh, the picture meeting of Japan, China, and the West of uh, Shiva Kokan, uh, uh, the, uh, which uh, of course was uh, created much before um, Ariga's time, but for me illustrates uh, Ariga's idea the most uh, than three sages. Uh, of uh, really Japan, China, and the West meet. And uh, what is usually um, uh, uh, can be demonstrated as uh, uh, this part, but uh, the full picture, uh, unfortunately, I didn't manage, uh, I, I divided it in two parts. Uh, the upper part is also interesting. Uh, we can see a Chinese uh, cavalry army in the background here. Uh, uh, of course, Pagoda uh, is uh, in fire. Uh, we can see uh, Japanese sumo wrestlers, the barrels of water on the hill, and the Dutchman uh, with mechanized uh, water pump in the center. And uh, they are preoccupied with the same practical task, to put out the fire and to save Pagoda. Uh, actually, uh, about this picture, a uh, professor uh, from Russia, uh, Professor Simon Vagudzenko from Moscow State University, uh, uh, wrote a very interesting mm -hmm. article, but uh, I, I have no time uh, to, to introduce it. And uh, what we can see, militant Chinese and idle uh, Japanese are powerless. Yeah. And only uh, technological progress is effective. And I would like to conclude with a uh, the, the citation from Ariga's text uh, that uh, shows the idea uh, that everything is good uh, only if it is uh, um, uh, can be used in the proper way. And a roof is useful for protection against rain and dew. A weapon is useful for vanishing enemies. Uh, in other words, each separate thing has its benefits and is limited by its purpose. Um, thank you for attention. If you have questions, yes, uh, comments, you. objections. Thank you very much.
thank you. Uh, I hope I hope uh, the colleagues via Zoom can hear me. So thank you very much for the presentation, uh, and uh, we are very good with the time. Uh, so oh, now we will have uh, time for a few questions. Uh, yes, Professor Adolf, how are you doing? I would um, like to ask you just a topic. When did you like? Uh, it was uh, 1885, August. It was published. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, could you say something about uh, the concept of Duma in the 1880s? The one you are translated? Yes. Uh, pre uh, I, pre uh, I prepared. Ah, uh, 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 we can go. With uh, just to save a little bit of time, uh, Bunga Kurum. Uh, uh, I just prepared some citations from really uh, a specialist in this area. But, uh, uh, for example, uh, Honma Hisawa, actually, he was who uh, discovered uh, this uh, paper because it was uh, almost unknown till the second decade of the 20th century. And uh, uh, so, he writes, I do not consider the work on Bungaku a literary theory because the meaning of literature there is somewhat different from what we call literature. Uh, Bungaku is uh, exceptionally in uh, uh, understanding this ter term or concept uh, by Ariga as neo-Confucianist. So it's a uh, text on history, it can be classical history, poetry, uh, philosophy, uh, but not fiction. And that is why uh, actually these uh, texts attract my attention because in some work I uh, read that uh, the theory of literature appeared in 1895. I said, oh wow, Japanese had theory of literature. And then I read actually, uh, Ariga uses bungaku, uh, the word bungaku, only once in the end. Ah, uh, thus, Bungaku is the learning of synthesis, the last citation. And I will devote a separate word to, uh, to the sequence of, of, of this learning, and then he goes to great learning uh, from uh, very ancient Chinese concept. So it's about uh, Bungaku, but not fiction. But I don't think it's writing either at this time. It's not writing either. It's not fiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, Uh, th uh, this is his original title. Mm -hmm. This is his original title. Yeah, uh, about learning. It's not about? Uh, uh, yeah. Learn it. Thank you for this comment because I also was thinking about it, but, uh, you know, I just simplified my task. <laughs> right. so, okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, uh, bungaku, uh, bungaku uh, uh, this translation like liter uh, bungaku as a translation for literature was proposed by uh, Fukuzawa Yukichi in his uh, Seiyu Jijo, and uh, uh, then the history started, uh, yeah, of all these distortions. Yes. No, I, I'm, I'm for literature, but I'm mm -hmm. for writing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And we have a question from Roman. Also, oh. uh, in the Zoom. Roman, can you hear us? Yes, I was just about to Roman. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, I was just about to lower my hand because uh, I couldn't be uh, hear Professor Arakar's question, but based on Nina's answer, obviously, it was 
the same person. So why did you choose which language and why did you choose in that one? It's it's the same question. Um, well, I wanted to ask this question because um, so Google is of course very uh, problematic term. Nobody uses it today. Everybody uses it today for literature, and nobody thinks uh, twice about it. Um, but actually, um, I'm involved uh, in a in a project of translating an anthology of um, Japanese literature theory, um, so Bukaku Um which tries to trace um, the development of um, a theory of literature. In and, and it actually starts with the later period as um, later. people like uh, Tsuboji Shoyo and the so on and so forth um, included in the anthology. And this is a, a group project, so there's at least seven or eight of us um, working on uh, different sections of the anthology. And one of the problems we have with this is that even though um, they write at about the same time, sometimes you have authors using bumaku with different meanings. They use the same term of bumaku, so sometimes it means fiction, sometimes it means not fiction, um, as, you, as you were saying. Uh, some authors also use it interchangeably with bumge, for example. Yeah. So uh, when they say bumge, sometimes they refer to literature, but in other cases, when they say bumge, they actually talk arts in general, including literature, but not exclusively uh, literature. So it's a really uh, problematic term. Um, there, um, this is one of the, the things that's delayed in the publication of the anthology is it's very hard to come up with uh, good terms for this. Um, I wanted to ask, so why you chose to translate the title as writings, which um, Sounds very neutral, but I think we'll really answer that. And if he uses, if Anika uses any other terms like bunge or uh, any, I don't know, um, if he, for example, if he talks about literature, what terms does he use to refer to literature? Uh, thank you, Roman, for your question. <clears throat> Of course, he uses, uh, talking about text, he is using uh, buncho. Uh, he's, buncho uh, he's using buncho. Uh, he cites a lot uh, of uh, Chinese classics, like Zin uh, and so on. Uh, mainly, he, uh, yeah, he, he talks uh, buncho. It's uh, what he is uh, using for text. Uh, but also, buncho, it's... Uh, somehow synonymic in his uh, interpretation to knowledge. Uh, yeah, so it's not uh, only material objects, uh, it's uh, also a knowledge. And then he talks about fine arts. Uh, he, uh, he is using... Uh, he, is, uh, he, is a, he was a student of uh, Ernest Fenelosa. Yeah, so for me, uh, it explains a lot, and he is following his concept. Uh, he, uh, while talking about fine arts, he tried to uh, synthesize, synthesize <laughs> uh, European tradition and uh, uh, Asian Chinese, Japanese uh, 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 concepts of fine arts. So he, he, he did a great mixture and... Uh, uh, but he is using it for very practical task to uh, and, uh, to explain how uh, a synthesis works, and uh, usually he is using uh, bijutsu. He uses bijutsu. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see more hands in Zoom. But it can be my fault. No, uh, I don't see no more hands in Zoom, neither in the room. So I suggest uh, we proceed to our next uh, presenter, who will be. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> again. I want yeah, to thank you. Very much.